With last episode's disastrous end, there exists a few major problems with the current lunar program. The first being the launch vehicle itself, not only a messy cluster of tanks, but unreliable and inefficient at that. The second being Aurora's launch escape system, which works effectively during flight, but due to thrust imbalance in the escape tower unnoticed previously, will undoubtedly kill our crew during launch pad aborts. And lastly, in the case of inefficient lunar transit burns, we need a bit more efficiency from Aurora while docked with a fully fueled Borealis lander, but we'll deal with that next episode. But until then, seeing as we have to fix all of these problems before returning to the moon, we've got our work cut out for us. First up, the launch escape system. We're using a different tower altogether and have added additional small solid motors to counteract the escape system's lateral tendencies. We do want to throw ourselves to the side, but only slightly, and in a way that removes ourselves from a failing rocket's trajectory, but heaven knows we don't want to go straight sideways, because, well, we know what happens in that case, let's not repeat it. In order to test the new tower, a small rocket powered by two caster SRBs was developed. We call this the J-Hopper, or J for short. It's not far off from the Little Joe rocket that NASA used to test various systems, such as this in real life as well, so points for realism, I suppose. Aurora is safely jettisoned from J just before burnout of J. Separation appeared a little bit sluggish, which does raise some mild concern. However, the escape from J was stable, and the tower's lateral propulsive forces were successfully counteracted for an appropriate amount of time, only flipping the capsule 180 degrees at the last possible moment, and this allows the tower to fall away from the space capsule without any finagling. We also redesigned the parachute system as well, so it's simpler and therefore faster when we stage it. The parachute system does in fact work as intended, and it deployed with plenty of time to spare. All in all. So, all in all, I'm happy with it. Now onto a much more important abort test. Abort from the ground. Because this is where it gets dangerous. Much to the relief of myself and chat, a few series of tests went wonderfully. We also performed this test via the Comet launch vehicle as well, although it went far enough away from Florida that we lost comms and never deployed the parachute. However, with souls on board, we'll be perfectly fine, that issue won't occur ever. Now the future crews of Aurora can rely on this escape method, should another problem arise. But now we have to address some problems with the launch vehicle itself. Nebula must be entirely redesigned from the ground up. This is Nebula 2A, our biggest rocket yet. So we had a 150 ton deadweight ballast nose cone on top of the nebula, but somebody didn't check their staging before launch. Nevertheless, we don't need aerodynamics where we're going, and our new rocket is more than capable to compensate for the extra bit of drag. Six F1A engines power the first stage, which to my knowledge are speculative test engines from real life that never actually flew. Compared to the Saturn V, these engines can burn for far longer, and are even capable of throttling down to 86% thrust relatively, which we do that just before stage separation. Now, four J2S engines take over, and if you haven't already guessed, yep, these are also upgrades to the classic Saturn upper stage engines. Longer burn time, better performance, and these come with deep throttle capability. So we'll maintain minimum throttle until we verify all second stage systems are nominal, and then open her up. More often than not, the third and final stage, a single J2S, will be needed to finalize the orbit. 
Now, because we happen to be 150 tons lighter, we have plenty of fuel in this third stage, more than I knew what to do with. So, as to demonstrate in-orbit capability of the new rocket, well, we decided to send it to the moon. Normally, we wouldn't have enough battery life to maintain comms with this stage on the several day journey to Earth's neighbor. However, we have a ludicrous amount of fuel and are henceforth capable of shortening that journey by burning more than necessary. What better way to christen the new vehicle than an unplanned lunar impact? Well, safe to say, Nebula 2 is go for crewed flight. N9SA stamp of approval, which has questionable worth depending on who you ask, but hey, who's running this thing anyway? During this time, we also upgraded the Comet launch vehicle with the same new F1A engine on the first stage, sporting a brand new look as well. As you can already tell by now, the Lunera mission is clearly going to the moon. Lunera is a brand new lunar lander that may see some use soon, and Lunara is a brand new lunar rover recently developed as well. Both of these vehicles are intended to be used on multiple occasions, very likely to see some commercial use for viewer payloads later on, but more about that in coming videos. Now the Banshee exploration stage is responsible for taking us from low Earth orbit all the way to a final breaking burn approaching the lunar surface. At the end of the breaking burn, we orient ourselves vertically and prepare to detach Lunera 1 several kilometers from the ground. This gives us plenty of time to correct our attitude and prepare for touchdown. Lunera is technically capable of landing its current payload all the way from lunar orbit, but since Banshee is one hell of a transfer stage, we can choose not to all the same. This makes Final Touchdown an absolute breeze, safely performed without any issue. Take that, Moonstone. And now that we're on the surface, we verify everything is A-OK -okay before we detach Lunara 1 from underneath the lander. Power is good, nothing's broken, so let's do this thing. Our rover is detached, and the lander uses its powerful RCS thrusters to take off again and land nearby, giving the rover enough room to maneuver away from the landing site. Which, of course, means that we're going to do donuts, because it, it wouldn't be me if that wasn't the very first thing I do with these kinds of spacecraft. But while doing so, I also discovered the Banshee stage managed to survive impact with the surface somehow, and remains mostly intact, so sort of a cool find. After leaving the launch site to complete a contract, we drove for quite a long time on stream, until after a long, long while, we discover an irresistible sight that steers us towards it without any hesitation whatsoever. A hill. This hill served as somewhat of a high point, pun intended, for the mission. From that small vantage point, we could see the Lunera lander just off the lunar horizon, very far away. And on the other side of this great hill, we could see a lumpy, interesting, and most importantly, not entirely flat, terrain that we had in front of us. So. Where will we go next? You'll find out soon in the next episode, as well as launching Aurora on the new Nebula. Thank you all so much for watching, and peace out.